And now it's time for Marvel in the 80s. And today we're talking about Silver Surfer Volume 2, number one. In fact, the only number, the only issue released in Volume 2 of Silver Surfer. It is written, or should I say plotted, by John Byrne. It is scripted by Stan Lee. And it is got pencils by John Byrne. And it's got inking by Tom Palmer. Lettering by Rick Parker. Coloring by Tom Palmer as well. And Jim Shooter, of course, editor-in-chief. This is a fantastic book that I have literally read for the first time this afternoon. I One recently came in in a collection. I had never read it, and I wanted to check it out. This book's phenomenal. First of all, let me point out the artwork. The artwork in this book, John Byrne, inked and colored by Tom Palmer, and it works. I love it when John Byrne inks himself. I love it when John Byrne um, is inked by Terry Austin. But there is something very magical about the combination of inking and coloring by Palmer on John Byrne's pencils. All right, so here's the basic plot of the story. It starts off by recounting the origin of Silver Surfer. Him on that planet, him and his lover, um, Galactus shows up. He offers to become Galactus's herald, and, and so he will uh, spare his planet. What is it, Shalabah? Or is the chick Shalabah? Yeah, the chick Shalabah. What is the name of the planet? You think I would be more prepared for this? Anyway, someone will correct me in the chat. So it recounts that. Then uh, it recounts his when he has to leave his love. And then it recounts um, when he turns against Galactus um, in Fantastic Four. And of course, ever since then, he's been banished to the Earth. Galactus made this barrier around the planet that he cannot escape, right? And so he tries to escape just to make sure that it's still there. And of course it is, but he sees a beam, a beam, a probe or something focused on the barrier and he follows it and it's Reed Richards. So he shows up. He's like, what's up? Reed's like, yo, I was trying to get your attention. I think I know how to break the barrier. If I throw this, this, uh, laser or whatever at the exact same spot that you hit at the exact same speed, I think you can get through. He says though, the only issue is if you make it through, you can't come back. Because if you come back, Zen La, thank you guys, And because when you come back, you will be stuck on Earth again. I can't get rid of the barrier, but I can help you get through it one time and one time only. So he does. He actually makes it through the barrier. First thing he does is goes back to his home world, and no, no, it cannot be. It's destroyed. It's a barren wasteland. Look at that amazing work there by Vernon Palmer. The art in this book is freaking phenomenal. So he gets there. There's still some people. Apparently what happened is after he uh, turned and betrayed Galactus, he did his heel turn or whatever, Galactus shows back up to his home world, Zen Law, and then says, you know what? He broke his truce. I'm back. I'm going to feed on y'all's asses. But in a weird act of mercy that you don't typically see, he gives the residents 24 hours to flee. So 24 hours, they pack up, they leave, and, and then Galactus destroys the Earth, and then some of them come back. But he's like, but what about my love? What about Shalabal? Whatever her name. Is that her name? Shalabal, whatever. Um, so whenever that happens, they're like, she's not here. He, she was captured by this devilish creature. And this is one of those moments where Marvel teases Mephisto, and it actually is Mephisto. Um, so he's like, no. And then it's a reference to, there's an issue, there's some issues of Fantastic Four where he thinks he sees his lover in Latveria, but it turns out not to be her. But now it turns out that it was her because Mephisto came and totally ganked her up. And it's, this is all part of his plan. So having escaped Earth and can only come back once again to be trapped on Earth, he has to come back to Earth to confront Mephisto because Mephisto has his lover, right? So there you go. Shalala. Keep going. All right. Zenla and Shalala. Okay. Whatever. Um, his chick. So Mephisto, if you remember, of course, was first created in the pages of Silver Surfer, the John Basima, Stan Lee stuff, right? So this is actually the first time that we have a Silver Surfer book that's written by someone other than Stan Lee. Though Stan Lee is credited with the script, I don't know how much of that is true, but it doesn't feel quite... It does feel a little clunky at times, so I do believe that it's Stan. So anyway, turns out that this Latverian 
uh, villager is in fact his lost love. Mephisto's just planned this the whole time. He's come back now. Now he's fighting Silver Surfer. Look at that amazing artwork. Look at the inking. Look at the coloring on that. That's amazing. So you have this big battle, John Byrne fashion. It's absolutely epic and great. And then Mephisto like supposedly or apparently kills uh, his lover, his beloved. But what actually happens is that he turns her into this glowing beam of light. He's like, there is no forever, doomed one. So he turns her into this ball of light and shoots her back up into space towards her home planet. Surfer can no longer leave the Earth. So he has escaped Earth to go back to his love, found out that his love was actually on Earth, came back to Earth. Now she gets shunted back to her world and he can't catch up, but he's able to use his power cosmic to kind of stop the curse that Mephisto put on her. And he does it. And so with his last act, she's going to be okay. She shows back up in her home world. And with the gift of life that the cosmic power has done, she starts bringing life back through vegetation on the planet. And then Surfer's happy enough with that. And he's like, you know, I may still be stuck on Earth, but at least I was able to bring my love and my homeworld life. So there you go. This book was really freaking good. Like, I liked it a lot. The artwork was super fantastic. Tom Palmer. I wish we would have gotten more of Tom Palmer coloring and inking burn. I need to look to see if we actually did. Because it is gorgeous. There are moments where it just pops. There are great, brilliant moments. One of my favorite moments is when he shows up to the barren planet. And let's get to that real quick. Right there. Really great work. This is a fantastic book, and I loved it. So there's the copy that I read right there. The Silver Surfer. It's odd that this is credited still officially as Volume 2, even though it's a one-shot comic. You can get it for about 6 to 10 to $12 right now. It's got a Cracker Jack ad. It's got that Olympic guy that used to try to get you to, like, collect points and sell shit to get shit. Um, it's a great book, and I had a lot of fun with it. It came out in 1982. I was one year old. I have never read this. I've, I've known about this. And another thing is I've never read the Mobius uh, two-issue series, so I should get in on that as well. Um, Jack Kirby not, uh, would be proud of this, I think. Stan Lee, of course, has his name all up on it. I don't know how much work he actually did, but I freaking love this book. There's a double-page spread in here once he gets to hell or to Mephisto's spot that I love. There it is right there. That's beautiful. That's composition that you see in pages of uh, Nice House on the Lake, Something is Killing the Children. You see this a lot today, and you didn't see it a lot back then. And Byrne was one of those kind of dudes. Look at the shading. Look at the shadow. Look at the coloring. Look at that cover. If you're a Silver Surfer fan, check it out. If you've never read a Silver Surfer book, this one totally would just be a great introduction. Um, it was a really nice one-and-done self-contained story that I absolutely loved, and that was tonight's presentation of... Marvel in the 80s.